Marco. Right. So, what I'd like to talk about today is the tragic death of a teenager in Netherlands. I'm talking about the death of Noah Pothoven, a young teenage girl that was failed by her family, failed by her friends, and failed by the state of Netherlands. I'm reading Evangelical Now as my source. I'm just going to introduce the story by reading from the paper. The change in the reporting of the cause of a, of a Dutch teenager, a cause of death of a Dutch teenager, which the media saw as preventable, highlighted how supporters of assisted dying are keen to ensure that euthanasia's growing acceptance in society continues. First reported as being a euthanasia, days later, Noah Pothovan's cause of death was altered to one of non-intervention. Now, let me just tell you the background story. Noah Pothovan was a girl abused by members of her family. She was raped and she was abused. And she suffered deep trauma and depression because of that. Euthanasia was something that she wanted for herself. But there was nothing physically wrong with her. There was nothing physically wrong with her at all. She had psychological issues and she wanted to euthanize. The state didn't provide the kind of counseling and support that that teenager needed to live. She was euthanized because of a culture of death that is taking grip in European society. The article continues. Many were horrified at the lack of support available for a girl suffering with mental illness who had been waiting over a year for treatment for an eating disorder. Others were saddened that someone so young would entertain the idea of euthanasia. It is difficult to imagine a teenager with no physical ailments essentially being allowed to starve herself to death. Noah's devastated parents believe the Dutch authorities failed them. The idea that a state could allow a teenager in the full blossoming of youth to kill themselves because she was nothing more than depressed and dealing with trauma from childhood abuse is alarming. Where did that come from? It came from a society that has decided that a euthanasia is the easy option to dealing with troubled individuals in our society or society that is troubled by those that are weak and infirm. Noah was given a cocktail of drugs as 81 other presumably terminally ill teenagers in Holland were 
in 2018, in 2018, a liberal, progressive, non-Christian state murdered 81 teenagers that were its own citizens. She died as a result of self-induced starvation. This palliative sedation can be administered in Holland when a patient's life expectancy is no more than two weeks. The problem is this young teenager was not going to die. She had nothing physically wrong with her. She would have lived if she had wanted to and she didn't want to because the state did not feel that it was worth funding the help that she needed to overcome her psychological trauma. The state believed a false narrative that the will of the individual in choosing what happens in their own life is paramount and cannot be overrided by any other concern than by their own demands. It is the same logic that says that a man can self-describe to be a woman and no one can argue with them and that a woman can self-describe to be a man and no one can argue with them and now an individual with no real physical reason as to why they should die other than they are depressed and that they want to cannot be questioned by the state. However, Noah's life expectancy should have been long as any other 17-year-old teenager. Hers became two weeks because she voluntarily went on hunger strike because she couldn't get the mental health support that she needed. In other words, the Netherlands state said that it was a cheaper option to let her die than to give her the emotional help that she needed because her family couldn't support it. That is liberal progressive ideology for you. That is liberal progressive ideology bearing its fruit. That's right. A teenage child who is depressed and emotionally scarred being allowed to die because the state has no values higher than the value of individual choice and self-determination. That is the path that the West is going down because it has abandoned the Christian faith. Noah, God bless her soul, was sexually assaulted and raped as a child. She suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. These are her words. My house has been broken into, my body that can never be undone. Out of fear and shame, I relive the fear, the pain every day, always scared always on my guard and to this day my body still feels dirty. Noah needed help and non-intervention when she lost her hope. That child was failed by a sick society following a sick value system that said that we can offer you no hope
because we don't believe in an afterlife, because we don't believe that there is a God that will give justice to you, Noah, and will punish that rapist for his crime. Because we don't believe that there is a God that can give you hope and redemption. Because we don't believe that there is a value higher than your own choice. And if your own choice is governed by an emotional trauma, then we can't argue with it. We can't dispute it. We can't say to you, see the world another way. Because every individual has their truth. And every truth is equally valid. And so, if your truth tells you that there's no point to life, then we as the state can't intervene and tell you that you're wrong. We can't offer you another answer. We just, we just have to accept that you want to die and we just have to let you do it. And that's what happened in the Netherlands. A teenager was allowed to die by an atheistic society that has made paramount the idea of individual truth. Now I am a Christian. I don't believe that rubbish. I don't believe that just because you think something's true that therefore it is. Just because you have your interpretation doesn't make it valid. There are values more important than individual choice. Like the value of life and its sanctity. It isn't your body. You don't get to choose what happens to it. You don't get to abort your child. You don't get to affirm an identity, a gender that's not based in reality. And you don't get to kill yourself because society says your life is not worth living because you say so. That poor child was failed by the ideology that dominates in the West. Jesus said, you shall know them by their fruits, and by their fruits you shall know them. For a good tree does not bear bitter fruit, and a bad, sorry, yes, and a bad tree does not bear good fruit. For each tree produces fruit according to its likeness. The Christian faith values life. It values hope. And it says that in every situation there is always hope. No matter how dark the days, no matter how terrible the storm, no matter the injury, no matter the pain, there's always hope. And if we had a culture that was being influenced by the Christian faith and not by liberal progressive atheism, this poor child would still be alive today as would the many aborted children in our society. The state allowed her to die in Psalm 918 it says, for the needy will not always be forgotten, 
nor the hope of the afflicted perish. Now if a society valued the needy and the afflicted as the Christian faith does, Noah would still be alive because the Netherlands state would have provided the help she needed when she needed it. But they didn't. They valued instead individual choice. The Psalms say, David speaking, I would have despaired unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The fact of the matter is that if we have a society that builds itself on the things that are the good values of the Lord in this world, Noah would still be alive. But she is dead because an atheist, liberal, progressive state allowed her to die. Get him out. Get rid of the liberal establishment. Return to a muscular Christian faith. Psalm 33, 18. Behold, the eyes of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope for his loving kindness. We as Christians are a people of hope. It is one of our highest virtues. And therefore, as Christians, we should encourage one another to hope. Hope is what inspires you to keep going up against adversity. Hope is what inspires you to press on when all the world is against you. Hope is what inspires you to take the next step even though it's hard. Hope is what keeps you in the fight. Hope is what gets you in the ring. Perfect. We as Christians need to keep our hope in the certainty of the resurrection, in the certainty of that resurrection that gives us the courage to face the challenges of life and to give hope to people like Noah, who was failed by a liberal atheist society. It's time to get rid of the liberal establishment, get rid of the liberal culture and return to a muscular Christian faith because that faith would build a society on the good things of the Lord and would care for the afflicted and the oppressed and would help them and Noah would still be alive and women would not be forced into abortion clinics and given a euthanasia. You have a choice, choose a better way. So what I'd like to talk about next is the wolves in sheep's clothing that we have in the church. Christ said that there would be wolves in sheep's clothing, that they would have the appearance of being harmless, but that ultimately they would be deceivers and damaging to the church. And I want to talk about one such wolf in sheep's clothing. In the Anglican Communion. So I'm reading from the New York Times. Curacao, the Dutch island off the Venezuelan coast, is nice this time of year. Actually, it's nice any time of year. The temperature is in the low 80s, 
and the seawater is nearly as warm. It must be a nice place to give a sermon, but for Catherine Jeffords Shorey, since 2006, who is the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church in the United States, memories of Curacao will always be associated with the controversy that greeted her upon her return. Another controversy in what has been already a rocky tenure as the head of a troubled, shrinking church. On May 12th, Bishop Jeffords Shorey preached in All Saints Church in the town of Steenridge, Curacao, in part of the Episcopal Church's small diocese of Venezuela, and Bishop Jeffords Shorey was making a pastoral call to a distant congregation. Her text was Acts 16, verse 16 to 34, and I invite you to open it and read it for yourself, which includes the story of a slave woman and fortune teller whom Paul encountered in Philippi, Macedonia. As Luke, who Christians believe is the narrator, tells the story, the woman had a spirit of divinization and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. While she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, these men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. Now notice the subtle lie that the demon told. A way of salvation. Whereas the Christian faith teaches that Christ is the only way of salvation. That will become relevant shortly. After many days, Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, and it came out that very hour. This story has historically been read as a tale of Christian exorcism, in which Paul delivers the woman from some sort of indwelling spirit, or alternatively, strikes a blow for monotheism against the local beliefs in plural gods. But as Je Bishop Jefford Shorey interpreted it, the passage, Paul, and this is her interpretation, was guilty of failing to value diversity. To see the slave girl's beautiful difference. Paul is annoyed at the slave girl, Bishop Jefford Shorey preached. She's telling the same truth Paul and others claim for themselves. Now be aware, Paul taught that there is no other name under which man can be saved except the name Jesus, but the demon-possessed girl said that he was teaching a way of salvation. So the demon lied and she didn't spot the lie and she's supposedly a bishop. But Paul is annoyed, so she goes on, this bishop. She's telling the same truth Paul and others claim for themselves, but Paul is annoyed, perhaps for being put in his place, and he responds by depriving her of her gift. This bishop called demon possession a gift of spiritual awareness. Paul can't abide something he won't see as beautiful or holy, so he tries to destroy it. Now, that was her sermon. That is what she said. Let us be clear, let us be clear. 
bishops are supposed to be the guardians of orthodoxy. They are supposed to be like Athanasius or Antony or Augustine. They are supposed to defend the Christian faith, not mould the Christian faith to fit into the culture of our modern liberal world with its modern progressive values about diversity. The apostolic teaching is clear. There is only one name under heaven by which man can be saved, and that is the name of the man Jesus Christ. Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. In the book of Acts, this child demon possessed said that the, they were teaching a way of salvation and the bishop didn't see the lie. Not only did she not see the lie, this bishop said that this lie was beautiful, that this lie was a gift and that Paul was guilty of not seeing the beauty of diversity and the many ways to truth. And that Paul, who was later put in prison for this exorcism, put himself there because he couldn't see beauty. Now what's going on there? This bishop this wolf in sheep's clothing, this heretic, this whore of Babylon, she has abandoned the faith of the apostles because she wanted to fit into the culture. She wanted to go along with the political narrative of our time, that everyone has their truth, and every truth is equally valid, and every truth should be equally respected. Paul's exorcism of the demonic spirit shows that that is not the Christian way. We do not value diversity if diversity is a lie. We don't value diversity if diversity means saying that what is false is true and what is right is wrong. Well done. We Christians have our own way and we Christians need to ensure that our fellowships are following our faith and not bending into the culture or trying to fit in with the times. Now why is it that the Episcopalian Church has been overrun by bishops teaching heresy? like this bishop was teaching. It is because they are not following the apostolic teachings we find in the Bible. Listen to this message. In the book of Revelations, chapter two, reading from verse two we read, this is the letters to the churches founded by Paul being written to by the Apostle John, showing that the Christian faith was founded by all the Apostles and not just Paul, as some people lie about. But listen to what John writes to the Pauline Christians. He says, quoting the words of Jesus, I know your deeds, 
and your toil and your perseverance and that you cannot tolerate evil men and you put to test those who call themselves apostles and they are not and you found them to be false and you have perseverance and you have endured for my name's sake have not, have not grown weary. Now, what is the Apostle John saying to the church? That you persevere in the truth. And the truth is that there are not many ways to truth. That there's only one truth. There's only one interpretation that corresponds to reality. And if there are other interpretations that contradict that truth, they should be rejected. And if you persevere in that truth, you may be an outcast. You may be rejected by society. You may be villainized as intolerant or bigoted or prejudiced. But persevere, you must. And if you persevere and you are imprisoned or tortured, you persevere nonetheless. But it says that you test the apostles. You test them for their orthodoxy. You test them to see if they have a Christian identity or an identity built on the liberal, progressive culture of our time. And if a bishop believes more the political narrative of our time, our atheistic, liberal, progressive thought, they should be excommunicated from the church and cast out. This bishop and bishops like her in the Church of England need to be excommunicated. One second, Mo. They need to be cast out of the church. The Church of England needs an inquisition. It needs an office of inquisition to examine the doctrines of its teachers and when those doctrines are not found to be apostolic, when they are found not to be Catholic, when they are found not to be holy, when they are found not to be orthodox, they need to be removed from their officers, Christians become activists in your church against heretical bishops and drive them out of your churches. Bishops that buy into transgender mythology, drive them out. Bishops that buy into relativistic forms of truth and plural understandings of truth drive them out. Christians, bishops, that confuse being a Christian with being a citizen of the state and try to change the church into an NGO of society rather than a living community of the kingdom. Drive them out. Drive out the false bishops and reclaim your church for the one holy Catholic and apostolic church that Jesus Christ our Lord founded 2,000 years ago.